I'm a professional environment artist with seven years of games industry experience, specialized in photogrammetry and foliage for multiple titles. Today I will show you how to get the most realistic foliage for your project. So here you can see the beautiful result of the photometric stereo work. I will give you a short breakdown on how it works. As you can see, it's perfect, perfection. So before we start, just you wait, hold your horses. We need to talk about what photometric stereo even is. So photometric stereo is a method to create a 3D model based on different lights. By analyzing how the object looks under various lights, it figures out the shape and creates a 3D representation. That sounded really fancy and complicated, but yeah, it's really easy to do in practice. For my IV scans, it means I place some IV leaf on my white LED panel. I take a cross polarized shot without the panel turned on and with the panel turned on for translucency. And when that's done, I turn everything off the panel and the flash and get eight additional shots just with my small lamp circling around the object and then it's basically done. Everything is synced over to my PC because I'm triggering the camera via Sony software on my machine and that's everything. And now you have your scan but what should you do with that now? Well now we need to enter the magic software called Lightroom. It's pretty useful for adjusting images in photogrammetry in general, but we just need to change the white balance and yeah, let's just hop over to Lightroom and I see you in the program. I only need Lightroom for the white balance I captured. This will make sure every picture has the same color later on. I just quickly import all my raw images, delete what I don't need, pick the white I want to use and yeah, just sync it over to the other images. That's basically everything and when that's done, I export everything as a JPEG. So the next thing I will create is the mask in Photoshop. We need this mask later on to mask out stuff in Art Engine and we want to take our time and be sure it's accurate. With the new Photoshop AI, it's really easy to separate the leaf from the background. So I just create a mask around the leaf, make sure the stem is included and the part where the stem meets the leaf is also included. Sometimes the AI will mess up at this point. And when I'm happy with the selection, I just fill it with white, invert the mask and fill it with black and that's the mask you need. So I export it as a JPEG. I don't need it as a PNG because in the end it's a separate image in Art Engine, so no need for, for the Alpha channel. And yeah, that's everything for Photoshop. The next step is Art Engine. So I see you in Art Engine then. Let's hop over. So now we get to the fun part. That's where we create our, not really a mesh, but our image, which we can translate to a mesh if we want to. So we will create our foliage now. Art Engine is my app of choice at the moment when it comes to photometric stereo. There's a lot more. You can use Substance Designer, Substance Sampler, some other third party apps I will cover at some point. I would say Art Engine is good for getting started and you can use it if you want to go a little bit more advanced. So it's basically the same as the Substance Designer one but it has some advanced notes. The first difference is the note we will use for getting started. Substance Designer and Substance Sampler basically support the eight point note, which is using all the eight images with different light angles. And Art Engine is doing the same, but you have one more note, which is called the Chrome Ball note. So I use this instead of the eight point light note because I have more control over it. The only difference is you need to plug in a mask, a chrome ball mask, and uh, that's just done with a mask paint. I plug the note in and uh, paint the mask, give it to the chrome ball mask note and voila, I have my albedo and my normal. The albedo is fine, but I already captured my own, so I don't need it, I will ignore it. So with the normal, I just give it a gradient clear or like I, I remove the gradient or I, I try to remove some of the gradient from it just to make it more uniform. Based on that, I just create a height map, which will be also the gradient, if that's a word. So I try to remove a lot of the gradient. The albedo map is used to generate the roughness 
and the translucency is just the translucency. I fill it with um, a solid color as the background and I give it some hue saturation adjustment, but that's everything I need to do. When I'm happy with all my maps and all my potential outputs, I just plug it into a material node and after that I crop it down to a 2K texture. So I have a power of two texture and I could use it in an atlas if I want to. And when that's done, I just give it the output. And yeah, that's everything. It's really that easy. It's not really different if you are using Substance Designer or Sampler, but what if you want to generate a whole atlas? So we have one, I believe, maybe we want four. So for that, I would hop over to Substance Designer and yeah, let's jump over. I'll show you around and as you can imagine, that's also really easy to do in Substance Designer. If we want to create our own foliage atlas in Substance Designer, there's a custom node called Plantress. Well, it's not free, don't cry. It's a little bit of investment you need to do. It's not much, but it's completely worth the money. It's the best node I ever bought for Substance Designer. Here you can see the page. I link it um, down below for you guys. So grab it, it's awesome. PlantPress is basically a node that allows you to add everything together in one trim sheet or in one atlas, however you want to call it. There will be a separate video about that node at some point just to break it down, how it works and how the bug strip works because it's really useful. So when I have all my leaf set up in Substance Designer, I put them all in one scene and combine everything together in the PlantPress node. You can add up to four different materials per node. And as you can imagine, you can just link multiple um, plant press nodes together to get even more on one sheet. So there isn't really a limit on how much you can put on, on your foliage atlas. But for now, I just used four leaves. So I just input all my leaves I scanned into the plant press node, and then I arrange them in a place where I think they would fit because I only have four leaves. There is not much to look at. It's pretty easy. You just slap these guys on and when you are done, you have enough free room between the leaves. So no overlap. I just give it dilation and yeah, that's already it. So it's way faster than combining them in Photoshop that took, I don't know, maybe five minutes and you are done. So you have all your maps into a material which you now can export and now you can just throw that into an engine mamo said unreal unity whatever you want it's that easy from scanning onto texture done i would say if you make it a few times if you practice that that takes maybe 20 minutes 25 minutes and you have a leaf done and if you are wondering what gear you should get for starting with photogrammetry you really should check out this next video.